Armed with only $20, I was able to create this Star Wars animation and here's how I did it. First thing I did was run to the nearest thrift store to find a costume. Every Jedi has some sort of rope and I found this disgusting trench coat. It was the wrong color, but that's not a problem because I can just dye it. I also found this broken lightsaber and a scuffed up Mandalorian mask, which I modified with scissors, tape, and a Sharpie. Very high tech stuff here. Now there was just one problem with my costume. You can see the back of my head. So how did I fix that? Well, obviously I took the hood off of my jacket and with a couple of safety pins, attach it to the trench coat. This is when I could test my acting skills. So I set up a leaf blower, my green screen, and action. And the Oscar goes to... Dax from YouTube. <laughs> With everything filmed, it was time to start editing, and you already know the vibes. We're using DaVinci Resolve Studio. I know what you're saying. That's a little more than $20, but hear me out. I didn't purchase the studio version for this video. I've had it for months now. Editing softwares are a tool. If you build a table, you're not factoring in the cost of the tools you use, only the materials required to build said table. Unless you don't have the tools, but my point is that it's not a reoccurring cost. So I'm sorry if you don't have the studio version, but there's plenty of free alternatives and I will try to give you them every time I use a studio feature. Anyways, the very first task was to roto myself out. But why would you do that if you have a green screen? Because I'm an idiot and, and I, I bought the studio version of Resolve instead of a bigger green screen. screen. That means I gotta replace the background with a green screen. However, it's really easy to do. The studio version has a tool called Magic Mask and all you gotta do is make a line and track forward. A free alternative is to use Runway ML. It's a super powerful website that can do a lot of different things, including rotoscoping. I have a very loud tutorial if you wanna check it out. This next step isn't necessary, but I added a noise reduction node to clean up some of that grain. This kinda helps later on, but it all depends on what your shot looks like. A free alternative, use better lighting or just leave it, I don't care. Okay, the very last thing I had to do was export this as an image sequence. So I added a saver node, selected a folder, labeled it pic.png, and then went to Fusion, render all savers. Now this is when the magic happens. To get that anime look, I used Stable Diffusion. It's kinda tricky to install, but I'll link a video in the description, or you can just look up Automatic 1111 install guide. If you've seen Corridor Crew's Rock, Paper, Scissor anime, this is a very similar process. However, what they did was use Dream Booth to train a model on them and the style they wanted. What I did was use an extension called Control Nut, and I also found a Laura model already trained in the style I wanted. I know that might sound like a lot of nonsense, so let me explain a little bit. In order for the AI to produce images, it needs to associate a word with an image. So if you want the AI to produce cat pictures, you would train it to associate the word cat with pictures of a cat. Pretty simple. Now there's already pre-trained models that contain thousands and thousands of different words and images and you can treat them like base models for you to expand on. So say you have your cat trained model, well you could inject anime pictures and train the AI to associate anime as an art style. Now you can combine cat and anime to give you an anime style cat picture. This is a really simplistic, probably poorly explained version of the text to image process. So let's say you have a very specific type of pose or composition that you Want. That's where image to image comes in. Basically, you add a picture and the AI squints really, really hard so the image is blurry and says, hey, that kind of looks like blank. This allows you to get the composition you want without having to prompt a whole bunch of things. Both Corridor Crew and I used the image to image process, hence why I exported the video as an image sequence. The only problem is that the blurriness changes from image to image. It's hard to get consistent results. So their solution was to inject their likeness and art style to the base model. My solution was steroids. I mentioned something called Control Map. This is an add-on you can get through Automatic 1111. You just go to the extensions tab and look for it. Basically, it adds edge detect to an image and then references that with the prompt image, giving you a really consistent result. This almost bypasses the need to train a model on your actor. Now, why didn't I just train a model on me? Well, in short, my computer isn't powerful enough. Training AI models require a lot of VRAM. From my understanding, the recommended amount is 24 gigabytes and I have eight. There are some settings you can mess with, but in my opinion, 
the results aren't good enough for animated videos. Also, just as a side note, there are cloud-based services you can use to train your AI models, but I'm on a budget. Anyways, a Laura model is a little different than a regular model. I wish I could explain it better, but when you train a regular model, you get a checkpoint file and they can be pretty big. Laura models are smaller because magic? The main advantage here is that you can take a Laura model and add it on top of any other model without the need for more training. So for example, this model is trained in the Studio Ghibli style and I can add it to any one of these models by using this prompt. How did I get this model, you ask? Well, there's tons of websites that contain models made by members in the community. I use Civit AI to find mine. I'll also link that down below if you want to check it out. Okay, I'll show you how I prompted these images, and there's also one more secret ingredient that I added. First of all, I used the Dream Shaper model found on Civit AI. This is kind of a general art model that worked really well with the Laura model I use. Speaking of which, if we go to Civit AI and find that Laura model, there's a little info icon. You can copy the prompts they used to create the image and what I did was modify it to fit mine a little better. So I started off by deleting all the character specific stuff and then I added more general composition prompts like dark intense shadows, cell shading, animate, words to push the AI in the style I wanted. By the way, like I mentioned earlier, this is the prompt for the Laura model. You don't have to go to Civit AI or save this somewhere in order to use it. If you hit this red icon, you can find a Laura setting and that's where all your Laura models are stored. Now before I could hit generate, there were a bunch of different settings I had to adjust. First was resize mode. I changed it to crop and resize and then adjust my height and width to fit my image. Quick side note, your resolution can affect how the output image looks. Most models are trained in a 512 by 512 resolution, so it's taking small samples of your image and making one big image. This can create a little bit of a problem depending on the composition of your shot. For example, a close-up of someone's face should be one composition, but a higher resolution is making more samples. This can distort your actor, but in a full body shot, a higher resolution can help you. Things like your arms, your legs, your head, all these are one piece and they can fit inside of that sample. So just mess around with it. Generally speaking, lower res for close-ups, higher res for wide shots. Anyways, sampling method, Euler. I didn't touch anything else. I went straight to control net. Dropped in the same image as above, checked enable, set the processor to canny, model, canny. I'll link the canny model down below. Change the weight to 0.65, resize mode, just resize, and then use the same resolution as above. Now the secret ingredient I added, the script. I switched it to image to image alternative test. Again, shout out corridor crew. Add in the original prompt here, set the decode steps to your sampling steps, in this case 20, uncheck decode CFG, and then finally check sigma adjustment. Before I hit generate, let's talk about what the CFG scale and denoise strength do. The CFG scale is basically how much style you want added to your image, and the denoise strength is how much blurriness you add. The AI can only add so much style for a blurriness level, and the blurrier the image, the more style it becomes. It's all about finding that perfect balance. If I hit generate right now, it's going to come out pretty wacky. I could try to add more prompts, but it's going to be really hard to get consistent results for each image because the denoise strength is just too high, causing a loss of detail. Typically, you want your denoise strength in the 0.6 range. If I generate an image now, you can see that I retained a lot more detail. Now, in my opinion, this is too much detail. It's going to be a little tricky to prompt all this stuff out consistently. So what I did was bring down my sampling rate. You can think of this as kind of the detail scale, because it's anime, there's not a whole lot of detail. This is a good place to start. It's pretty close to the final image and there's not a whole lot of craziness going on. At this point, I started adding in more prompts, things that describe the scene. So for example, I added facing away from the camera, solid gray trench coat, black pants, and in the negative prompt, I added things I didn't want, stuff like high detail, side profile, colorful. It's a little bit of experimenting here. Let's see what it looks like though. I mean, that's pretty good. It got rid of all those weird designs. So the next step is to test these settings on the next frame. Nothing should really change. Perfect, nothing really changed other than the pose. What I did at this point was go through random frames and just made sure everything looked right. Frame one should be consistent with frame 100. And if it's not, add more prompts, adjust your CFG scale, your denoise. A little variety is okay because we can fix that later on. Now I know what you're thinking. And no, you do not have to do this for every frame. We can do this in a batch, literally just 
go to batch. For the input directory, you're going to copy the folder you saved your image sequence to. And for the output directory, you're going to copy the folder you want this saved to. Now, before you hit generate, just double check to make sure all your settings are correct. And you also don't want to have an image in control net. Once that's done, you're more than likely going to have a folder of some pretty low res images. If you remember, I set my resolution to 576 by 1024. Luckily, Stable Diffusion Web UI has a built-in upscaler. You can find that in the extras tab. What I did was test a random frame before batching everything. The resize scale is how much you're going to upscale your image by. So if I take the original resolution and multiply that by four, that will give me something a little more than 4K. But none of that matters if we don't use the right upscaler. You can test out any one of these right here, but more than likely, you're gonna choose between these two. Don't ask me to explain how any of this works. I just hit the button and compare the two images. Once you got the upscaler you like, it's time to batch everything. And it's just like what we did before. You copy and paste the directory. Woo. All right, that's how I turn myself into an anime character, but there's still some things I need to do, like I need a background and the at, -AT. So how did I get the background? Well, I literally typed in epic Star Wars landscape in the text to image tab. I changed the resolution to 1024 by 576 and then upscaled it. I did have to do some in painting, but that's really easy to do. You just draw over the stuff you don't like and then add in a prompt for what you want it to be. The ATAT, -AT, on the other hand, was a little bit more tricky. I found a free model on Blend Swapped and it was already rigged, and honestly, the style wasn't too off from what I wanted. In Blender, I set up a green screen, a light, camera, and I want you guys to know that I'm not an expert at all. I've made the donut a few times, and that's it. So if I can do it, you can too. Okay, everything's rendered, but I had two issues to address the flicker and the actual lightsaber. Luckily, they're both easy fixes, but I could have made my life a little bit easier. Let's start off with the flicker. Once again, corridor crew save the day. First, you wanna add an automatic dirt removal node and then a deflicker node. It's that simple. The only thing you wanna do is change your deflicker setting from time lapse to floral light. Now you can just copy paste this two or three times depending on how bad the flicker is. There was some weirdness from the deflicker node, but that's a simple fix. I added a background node and connected it to all the blue arrows and then I used the alpha slider to keyframe all the nodes at once. And I just turned it off and back on again. Also, while I was here, I keyed out all that green. So I added a delta keyer node, brought it into the first window, and then I changed the color viewer to alpha. With the eyedropper, I selected the green, and now you can see this black and white image on the left side. All of those gray tones are transparent. So to clean that up, we can head over to the matte setting and adjust the threshold. You'll notice a little haziness right here. To clean that up, go to pre-matte and just select it. There's some pinholes, but that's a pretty easy fix. All you gotta do is bring up your clean foreground setting. Perfect key. Now the deflicker nodes are a killer on my PC, so I rendered this in place. Back in the edit tab, I right-clicked my video and selected render in place. But we need that transparent background, so I changed the codec to DNX HR. The last step was to add in the lightsaber. And like I said, I could have made my life so much easier just by adding a tracking note or not using a green object on a green screen. So I had to do it by hand. It's not a big deal though, because it's just a few frames and it doesn't have to be perfect. I started off by adding the original footage to my timeline and then putting my animated one on top. After selecting both of them, I created a new fusion clip and began working. The first thing to do was to find when I pulled out the lightsaber. Now I could drop in a background node, change the color to white, attach a polygon node to the blue arrow, and with the polygon node selected, I can make two points where the lightsaber was. I unchecked solid and then brought up my border width and hey, that kind of looks like a lightsaber. So every couple of frames, I would adjust these points to match where the lightsaber was and then it was kind of tracked in. Now I could stylize it. In between the polygon and background node, I added a fast noise. This is to give the lightsaber some light variation. I also added a displace node and used a modified version of my original fast noise to give it some texture. To add some actual light, I used a soft glow and then I used a color corrector to change, well, the color. The last thing to do was to clean it up. So doing things like matching my animated hands better, adjusting the width, masking things, all the nitty gritty stuff. Now, to make this look even more animated and help with the flicker, we can drop the frame rate to 12 FPS. This was originally 24 FPS, so if I add a time speed node, set the interpolation to nearest, and then change the speed to two, I can copy paste this and change the speed to 0.5. Basically, it removed every other frame by speeding it up, and then by slowing it down, we stretched it out to fit our timeline. Okay, it's time for compositing. Really simple, 
I dropped in the background, the at, -AT and then the final lightsaber animation, highlighted everything, and created a new fusion clip. I started messing with everything to get the general idea of what I wanted it to look like, but the main thing was getting the at, -AT off in the distance. So I created a mask around the cliff and then bumped up the soft edge like crazy. So the legs kind of blended in with the fog. To add some more life and sell the fog a bit more, I added a fast noise on top of everything and masked out where I wanted it. After adjusting the settings, it was starting to come to life. Now to tie it all together, I added some light rays, halation, lens reflection, little bit of grain, and then after some sound design, this is what the end results look like. And there you go, that's how I created this really short Star Wars anime. I had a lot of fun making this, and I hope to expand on this technique in the future. I also really hope that after watching this, you feel confident enough to make your own animation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below, or you can join the Discord and either myself or one of the members can help you. If you want to support this channel, all you got to do is subscribe, and if you learn something, hit that like button. Anyways, I gotta go, goodbye!